G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel coming at you from Macclesfield once again. Um, I am now on the other side of my Greece trip, which you can probably tell because I'm about five shades darker than I was this time last week. Obviously, haven't been recording uh, any videos or watching that much footy, obviously, because I was in Crete. So that's why you didn't get a round review from me this week, unfortunately, but Jersey stepped up to the plate with his nine things. So if you haven't checked that out, he did a review on the nine things we learned from round nine. And today, we're gonna be talking about round 10 and uh, my footy tips. Now, I do have to apologize. I have dropped the ball a little bit on keeping you guys updated with who's winning all the, the competitions we have here at True Footy. But this week, I'm going to remember. And we're gonna go through, uh, first of all, my tipping score, which is uh, 53 overall points, which puts me at 418th, which I believe is still in the top half of the competition. But you guys are showing me up. Um, it hasn't been a great year of tipping. And frankly, I've given up hoping that each coming year is going to be better than the last. I just seem to be getting worse. But uh, congratulations to the round nine winner, uh, Cronies Beats, with eight correct tips and a margin of 10. Interestingly, we have a new uh, tipping leader, Melanie Ma, uh, or Melanie Ma, with 61 and a margin of 244. And amazingly, we actually have 10 people all on the same score. But M Melanie Ma, Melanie Ma has the best margin and is, of course, winning the competition. So congratulations. Congratulations to you as well. Our fantasy leader is Bailey's Brawlers, not for the first time, with a score of 22,002 points uh, in terms of an average score. And one thing I'm going to start doing is including the Game Day Squad competition uh, winners each week in this uh, update that I do on Just the Tips as well. So our Game Day Squad winner of the week was someone called Plaps with a score of 2,428. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go check out the link in the description. It's Game Day Squad. It's a new fantasy alternative that I've been playing each week, as you can see. I've been doing weekly updates on how my team's going. It's all completely free to play if you want to. But if you enjoy your fantasy, or even if you don't, I know people that uh, weren't particularly into fantasy and got into this simply because I think it's a, a new, cool, alternative way to play fantasy sports. But anyway, we'll get into the rest of the video. As always, guys, Just the Tips is brought to you by our sponsors at manscaped.com. For all your manscaping needs, be it the body hair trimmer or all your liquid formulations to round out your grooming routine, you can get it all at the manscaped.com website. And you can use the code TRUEFOOTY20 for 20% off and free shipping. It came in handy on holiday. Naturally, we're getting a lot of sun. I was going out every night, so I was just using the Lawnmower 4.0 to make sure my chest was looking all good. Now, there was no direct sun to ball contact while I was on holiday, but the moisturizer would have been very handy had I been doing that. But it's got everything you could want, the colognes, the, uh, the ball deodorant as well, and you can get yourself a pair of Manscaped boxes as well. Whatever you buy, you get 20% off and free shipping thanks to our sponsors. All right, guys, we're back on Squiggle for this week of Just the Tips, and uh, we're going to start off this round with an absolute cracker. And I wouldn't go as far as to say grand final preview potentially, uh, but it's not out of the realms of possibility when you consider it's second versus fourth right now. It could certainly be a prelim, um, but I'm very, very interested in this game between Port and the Ds. The Power in particular are on a fantastic run of form at the moment with uh, six consecutive wins, and they went and trounced North Melbourne in Tasmania. And I, I went into that game thinking potentially, you know, North could give them a shake, but I think with the form that North are in right now, uh, they are so far off the pace. We have three really uncompetitive sides, but we'll talk about that in another video. But that's not to discredit Port, who still put them away by 70 points. You know, a lot of things are going right for them at the moment. Their young stars are playing well. Rosie and Butters in particular. Horn Francis is bobbing up most games. Finn Layson is getting on the end of a few and kicking goals as well, which I think adds a nice sort of dangerous element to their forward line with him in the form that he is in at the moment. And uh, yeah, six on the bounce coming up against the Ds, and we know how good the Demons are. And I, I genuinely think there is a chance that Port knock off Melbourne here. Melbourne's two losses this year were against the Lions at the Gabba and uh, then the other loss was against Essendon at this very ground. And I'm interested that this game is at Adelaide Oval, whereas uh, historically I think it's been in Alice Springs and maybe I've just missed the news on that. But both of these teams will be taking this game very, very seriously. As you can see, they're both seven and two. Melbourne are the better side. They put Hawthorne away pretty comfortably. The week before had a pretty tiring game against the Gold Coast Suns. For me, Melbourne is still a tier above Port Adelaide in quality, but this is a very winnable game for Port. I think I'm gonna uh, pussy out and still tip the Demons here by say 16 points, but Port, Port Adelaide have this win in them for sure. Next, we have a game that uh, threatens to be an absolute stinkathon, and that's coming from an Eagles fan. North Melbourne versus Sydney at Marvel Stadium. Uh, with North Melbourne, as I alluded to, their form has been, you know, really putrid over the last few few months. Really, they started the season two and zero, and look where they are now, down here in 16th 
with a percentage of 62.9%, and they've lost seven on the bounce and were um, fairly uncompetitive against Port Adelaide as we expected. Sydney, on the other hand, have not been that much better. They've been really disappointing. Uh, last week, losing to a Fremantle side that has had issues of their own, and uh, you could certainly make the argument things are clicking for Fremantle, and I know that Sydney have their injury issues, but they're at the point now where it's virtually season over, and this game is not as simple as it once looked on paper a few weeks ago. Between these two sides, it's 11 combined losses in a row, North Melbourne 7. Sydney have dropped four in a row since their uh, good win over Richmond a month ago. Because of how poor North Melbourne have been, I'm still going to tip Sydney here. Uh, but they're lucky, to be honest, because if they were playing any side outside of the bottom three right now, I wouldn't be tipping Sydney, I think, which is a huge indictment. Um, and I know they've got some bad luck. I'm not trying to lay into them. It's just a reality of where they are at the moment. So I will tip Sydney to win this by, uh, I'll say 28 points. I'll say they build a little bit of confidence throughout the game and they kick away. Um, but it's absolutely not a guaranteed win here. We've got the Bulldogs and Adelaide at Eureka Stadium, uh, which I think is Mars Stadium, if I'm not mistaken. The Bulldogs have been ticking over in uh, the last couple of months. Last week, getting a, uh, a good win over the Blues by 20 points. Had a late scare, but still managed to get the job done. And that's just been indicative of them since the opening, say, few weeks of the season. They've uh, bogged down and they've been fairly consistent in that period. Bontepelli in particular is probably the leader for the Brownlow at the moment, if I had to say. I was thinking about this earlier. In terms of consistency, the guy's an absolute machine, but Adelaide, on the other hand, have just slipped into the eight. They're five and four, and even though I made a video about them and how good they are, I have been reluctant to tip them in games, and they proved me wrong last week by smashing St Kilda. They're a very good side in South Australia, and I do think that their playing style with their fast um, spread and breakaway pace and those lots of running smalls, that was conducive to beating St Kilda. So I think it was a little bit of a clash of two teams with competing styles, and Adelaide were better on the day. Last time these two sides met at this stadium, the Crows actually got the job done in a year where there was a bigger gap between them on quality. I think I'm going to tip the Crows here, and deep down I feel like this is the week I'm going to get it wrong and they'll actually lose. But I think the Crows have earned my respect here. I do think the Dogs deserve to be higher than them on the ladder at the moment, and I'm not saying that the Crows are a better side, but I just think the way these two teams are colliding, I think the, the Dogs will get upset here. So this is an upset win for me, but I'm going to tip the Crows by 11 points. Next, we've got Fremantle and Geelong at Optus Stadium. And uh, this one, you know, prior to last week, would have been a very, very easy tip in favour of Geelong. But Fremantle have surprised us with a very good win in Sydney against the Swans, which is something they hadn't done for like 12 years or something like that. Not a very easy place to win, uh, particularly for Perth teams. But things clicked a little bit for them. Again, you have to factor in how good are Sydney at the moment. Um, I think there's a lot of question marks there, but you don't take too much away from Fremantle. It was a good victory. In particular, their forward line targets and that mix going forward was better in this game and I think has been better over the last few weeks than it was certainly in the first couple of months of the season. So Luke Jackson's found a little bit of form. He's taking marks inside 50. In fact, all of Tracy, Amos and Jackson, I think combined for 12 marks inside 50, which is a, a huge positive step in the right direction for Fremantle. Geelong, on the other hand, lost to Richmond on Friday night, which is a game I didn't really think uh, was very possible at all, but that was silly for me to underrate a Richmond side that have, still has so many champions in that team, and they can, can bob up, and they can live for these big occasions. So I don't know how much to read into it, because I think Richmond's form has been indifferent. If West Coast could stay with them for two and a half quarters, it's not the sign of a great side, to be honest. <laughs> I think we can all agree that the, the Richmond's win over Geelong was a bit of an outlier. So it comes down to whether or not you think this is the start of something new for Richmond, a really good run of form here, Dusty Martin back to his best potentially, or do you think it was just that they lifted for a big occasion against Geelong? I realize I'm talking about Richmond here more than I am talking about the Cats, but it is important in the context of assessing this game because Geelong had looked really good over the last few weeks going into that game. So we don't know if Geelong are slumping, we don't know if Fremantle are on the up, Either way, I'm going to tip Geelong comfortably here. I'm sorry, Fremantle fans, but Geelong at Optus Stadium, they tend to play well there. I don't think Fremantle have it in them. Geelong would have to play pretty poorly, and I'll say Geelong win this by a good 35 points. Next, we have one of the uh, probably one of the best Q clashes potentially uh, coming up in terms of the quality of both sides. We're arguably seeing the best Gold Coast version uh, or the best version of the Gold Coast side yeah, we've ever seen, to be honest. They sit four and five in a really improved month of form. They've had three wins, albeit against poor opposition. They beat Richmond at Marvel. Uh, they beat North Melbourne comfortably. They smashed West Coast in Perth. 
poor opposition, but they won those games fairly compellingly. And then the one loss they did have was five points against Melbourne, who were probably the second best side in the competition on current form. So there's been a clear evolution here from Gold Coast and a real good purple patch here. Three of the last four really speaks to some growth. And it'll be interesting to see how they go up against a, uh, a side that we know is an established quality team in the Brisbane Lions at the Gabba. The Lions haven't really put a foot wrong for, I think since round three, have they? I think they've won six in a row. They just had a big win over an Essendon side that has been playing some pretty good footy this year and not given us too much reason to doubt them in this game. But I do think that Gold Coast are a serious chance in this game. It's a big rivalry game. They want to put a full stop on this run of form to really legitimize themselves as an outside finals contender. I don't know if I see it yet, but if they win this game, they are a serious chance. So having said all that, I'm still going to tip Brisbane. You'd be a very t brave man to tip against Brisbane who haven't given us too much reason to doubt them for, as I said, something like six weeks in a row now. So I want to tip the Lions at home, but this one makes me nervous. I think this would be the upset of the round, ignoring the fact that I already tipped Adelaide. There's a serious chance we see a boil over in this game I reckon. That being said, Brisbane by 18 points in a very good game. Then we've got Essendon and Richmond, the dream time game, a big occasion and another reason for Richmond to come up and play big in a big occasion game. Um, I've already talked about Richmond in this video when, when talking about Geelong and I don't know whether to trust this sudden uptick in form but you factor in again this is, game is a big occasion. We are likely to see a good version of Richmond. Essendon uh, have been up and down. In fact, they were up when they beat Melbourne four weeks ago, but since then, they've had a tough run of fixtures, really tough opponents, and I think they've lost four in a row now. In fact, I just double checked, they have. They've lost to Collingwood, Geelong, Port Adelaide, and Brisbane, which is you know, close to four of the top five teams right now. So it's a little bit hard to assess them. Um, and in, against Port Adelaide, they put up a really good fight and almost won that game. So um, I don't think I will mark them down too heavily for a, a fairly comfortable loss at the Gabba because I think that's a tough ground. From the exposed form we've seen this year, Essendon have been better. They're only two points ahead on the live ladder that I've got there, um, but uh, and also 3%. But I think the exposed form we've seen from Essendon, they kind of earned my tip here. But I'm a little nervous because, as I said, Richmond in a big Dreamtime game, I think we're likely to see the best version of Richmond rather than the form that we saw you know, prior to the Geelong win. So I think I'm going to tip Essendon because I think they're a better side, but Again, Richmond could prove me wrong here. Then we've got the uh, the spoon clash between Hawthorne and West Coast down in uh, Tasmania. And I tell you what, this is a weird game because there's a lot of talk about Hawthorne potentially tanking. Um, and then on the other hand, West Coast were legitimately that shit. When assessing the quality of these two teams, even though Hawthorne sit half a percentage point behind West Coast, I was trying to think who's been the better team this year out of those two. And I think Hawthorne at their best, that's probably been better than West Coast. Uh, West Coast's best game was against GWS this year, and there's been a whole stack of injuries since then. So the form that Hawthorne showed against GWS and also the Crows in those back-to-back -back weeks and also their win over North Melbourne, I think has eclipsed what West Coast produced this year. And I think West Coast's worst has also been far worse than Hawthorne's, uh, which is saying something because both of these teams suck ass. Now, I'm a little bit cynical when it comes to tanking, but, you know, things like... Tim Kelly potentially missing this game for us. And then on the other hand, Hawthorne have had two injuries to Giath and Ward going into this game. And then Sam Mitchell going under COVID isolation. I don't know, like surely that's not some sort of weird attempt to slowly make excuses for losing this game. Because if both of these sides play to their best ability, I think Hawthorne win this game comfortably. But I've just got this funny feeling that both of these teams want not only pick one, but the first pick of the mid-season draft, which is only a few weeks away. So I don't know what to tip here because there's a part of me that thinks West Coast will come out and roll Hawthorne here because Hawthorne <laughs> will do some dumb shit to try and get pick one. I, I don't know. If we're going to base it on quality and who I think is the better team and who will win this game based on who is better than the other team, Hawthorne has shown more this year and uh, I have more confidence in them lifting to the occasion, particularly in Tasmania. Um, and, and I've just got very low confidence on West Coast at the moment. Reinforcements are coming but this isn't the week, or it could be because Hawthorne's tanking, I don't know. I'm gonna tip Hawthorne by 20, no, it'll be close in that, 13 points. And finally, this uh, has the potential to be an absolute ripper. Obviously, Carlton versus Collingwood always a big occasion, and when you consider the last time these two sides met, it was in dramatic fashion where Collingwood um, stole the game late, pushed Carlton out of finals, 
and um, and obviously made the top four, I think it was from memory as well. So a lot of talk about this game, even retrospectively. I follow Swoop Luke, I follow Blue Abroad, and this game gets referenced a fair bit. Therefore, this has the potential to be a really fantastic clash. Despite Carlton's indifferent form over you know the last five or so rounds, You'd think that if they're going to live for any occasion, it's the revenge match against Collingwood, who is the traditional rivals and probably the benchmark of the competition right now as well. They have been indifferent lately, though. In particular, we saw it against the Bulldogs, where, you know, for parts of the game, they were terrible, and parts of the game, they really threatened to, to steal it late against a fairly good side in the Bulldogs. So we know that Carlton's best is electric, at least in my opinion. It's fantastic. They've got such quality talls, and their midfield individually is made up of some really good players. So that being said, Dead. Collingwood are obviously a better side. Will it be enough for them to be spurred on by the, the narrative of revenge for them to topple Collingwood? I hope so, because that would be a fantastic spectacle. But at the same time, I can't trust this Carlton side right now. And we may see a game where they push them deep. I think we'd have to see Collingwood completely drop the ball on this one. And with the character of this side at the moment in a big occasion like that, I am not willing to bet on that. I think Collingwood win this game by, the more I think about it, I'm talking myself up into a big Collingwood win by 41 points, to be honest. But deep down, I hope we see a fantastic clash on the level of last year's game. Collingwood by 41 points. And the final game of the round, GWS versus St Kilda. Both of these sides have been a little bit of a mixed bag over the last five games or so. GWS's last game was against Collingwood at the G and they lost by seven or eight goals. So that's kind of par for the course, but they have won two of their last five with their two one wins against the struggling Swans and Hawthorne. So they sit in 15th and that's pretty much about right, to be honest. I mean, by contrast, St Kilda have slipped down the ladder. They're all three of their losses have come in their last five games and they've had one big blowout in their most recent game against the Crows by it was 52 points in the end. Now St Kilda have been very consistently good this year and I am inclined to think that this loss by 52 points against the Crows was a combination of playing away from home against a side that is very very good at their home ground who have a very fast and dangerous style that in my opinion is conducive to getting through St Kilda's pressure. Historically this St Kilda side has bottled it at times of the season where you think they're about to go on and play finals so there's two ways to look at it. Is that the start of that this year with a big loss in Adelaide against a side that they probably should have beaten or at least gotten a lot closer to or was it just a bad day against a tough opponent in tough conditions? I'm inclined to back them a little bit more and perhaps it's because this Ross Lyon side I trust a little bit more because of his proven record. So St Kilda are a little bit out of form undoubtedly, but are they out of form enough to lose to the Giants? Well, I'm gonna say no, but this Giants side is plucky. So I'll still say St Kilda win this by 33 points because frankly they are a better side and I am not willing to lose the faith just yet, but this loss, if they did lose it, would be alarming. All right, guys, that is my round 10 tips. Let me know in the comments what you agree with, what you disagree with. We'll just have a quick look at the ladder. We've got the Crows up into seventh now, um, which would be quite impressive. St Kilda jump back into the top four. West Coast taking out uh, pick one at the moment, which is really what we're all here to see. Um, who's going to get pick one in the mid-season draft? Ooh. Other than that, not a whole lot of movement. Port Adelaide uh, there in fifth. They could easily be third if they beat Melbourne. So that will be a pretty big clash, a real eight point game potentially, depending on how well those sides go deep in finals. But for me, that's the game of the round that I'm most interested in seeing. And the Q clash could be my upset of the round. Um, I can't tip Adelaide as my upset of the round because I did tip them outright. But anyway, guys, hope you have enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments what your tips are, what you agree with, what you disagree with, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.